Hello there, seventh graders. This is Mr. Kashi speaking. Uh, as you can see, I will not be in today, but uh, I'll go through the lesson here through this video. And uh, once again, one, whenever we're taking a video like this, uh, if you need some extra time to write down any notes, just um, uh, make sure that you stop it and or pause it right there, and you can uh, you can take notes. But I do have a limited time on this video, so just uh, make sure that you are able to pause it and get what get down what you need down. Um, hopefully, attendance was taken. Uh, already and um, hopefully the homework has been collected and uh, right now we're going to be starting uh, step three of our schedule which is 12-6 on combinations. This is very close to what we were talking about yesterday which is permutations. Um, combinations very very close to that. Your assignment today will be uh, a worksheet as well. So hopefully you'll correct the homework. We're going to skip the warm-up for today. 12-6 the first thing the first key point you should have down in your notes is what a combination is. Okay, so a combination is a grouping of objects in which the order of the objects does not matter. Okay, and we're going to be using terms like um, we have six things to choose from, but we can only choose two of them. So we'd be saying things like six choose two, or four choose three, or if we had ten things to choose from, we could only choose seven of them. It's ten choose seven. So those are the types of things that we'll be using. Um, as terminology with this, um, com with these combinations. Uh, if you need extra time to write that down, just go ahead and pause the video. But I do need to move on to the next slide. So this is an example that you can put in your notes. This is uh, rather um, one close to home uh, with uh, colors of socks. So you have four pairs of shoes to choose. Oh, sorry, shoes, shoes to choose from. Uh, you can only pack two pairs. So let's say you're going on a trip and you can only pack two pairs of shoes. How many different ways can you pack two pairs of shoes? Well, we have a blue pair, a green pair, a red pair, and a black pair. Okay. Now, different from yesterday, the order doesn't matter. Okay, because it doesn't matter what order you put the shoes in your bag, just as long as the two are going. Okay. And so yesterday we had a lot of different scenarios because order mattered, but today all we have to deal with is when the two are grouped together. So our first scenario would be uh, if blue and green were to go together. And then our second scenario would be if blue and red were to go together. And then our third scenario would be blue and black. Okay, And it can't be blue and blue because we only have one pair of blue shoes. Now yesterday we would have said okay well blue and red or blue and green but then a different com another a different permutation would be green and then blue but we don't care that the we don't care about the order just that both of them are coming with us okay and then some other pairings that haven't been paired up yet would be like green and red and green and black and then the last pairing that hasn't been paired up yet would be red and black Okay, and so as you can see here, you have um, all of your different combinations. All right, and we would have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have six combinations. Six combinations of shoes. So we could do it six different ways. Okay six different ways to take four pairs of shoes so we're saying what is four choose two well four choose two is six there's six different ways to choose two pairs of shoes that's a rather good example it explains um, pretty much the difference between permutations and combinations okay if you like once again if you need more time just pause the video uh, the next slide here is the combinations formula. Combinations formula is very, very important. Okay, this is going to be um, something that we use over and over and over again. Okay, and so we have um, n factorial up top, and n stands for the total number of options. These are all the options, uh, like we talked about. It's a little bit more close to permutations. Okay, and then what we're dividing out here is the things that would have repeated. Okay, so this would be. Um, when we divide by f the number of favorable options and the complement of f uh, n minus f okay uh, we are taking out those those um, repeated uh, permutations so how we were going from uh, blue and then green 
and then a permutation would be green and then blue. Well, we're taking that out by dividing it, dividing by these numbers down here. So n factorial over f factorial times n minus f factorial. And we'll be using this um, a few times here in different ways to make sure that you understand what this all means. If you need more time to write it down, just pause the video. I have to move on to the next slide, though. Okay, so obviously most of you know that I'm a track coach, and um, this is going to help me come up with a lineup. Okay, so uh, this is an example of how many different ways are there to participate in three track events. Okay, so now we're just talking about these track events up here, not the field events, just the track events. Okay, and so what we have is we have one, two, three, four. There are four different track events available. Okay, and um, but we can only participate in three of them. Now we could list them all out if we wanted to, but there's a little bit fat way of doing that. Okay, so if we have four, choose three, four choose three. Okay, and so what we're going to do is we're going to have four factorial up top. Okay, and then the number of favorable outcomes we have three factorial. And then in the parentheses we have 4 minus 3 factorial. Okay? So hopefully you guys can see that 4 minus 3 is 1. Okay? So we'll have 4 factorial over 3 factorial times 1 factorial. So what we have, let's just write these out. So we have 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 on top. That's what 4 factorial is. And then we have 3 times 2 times 1. And then we have another multiply, multiplied by 1. 1 factorial is just 1, obviously. Okay? So now what we can do, before we actually multiply these out, we can actually cancel some things out. So hopefully you guys can see that these 3s are going to cancel. Those 2s are going to cancel. Those 1s are going to cancel. And all we're left with is 4 divided by 1. 4 divided by 1 is 4. And that is our answer. How many different ways can we participate in three track events? Well, there are four different ways of doing that. Okay, so four, choose three, is four. Going on to our next example down here. Okay, if we want to participate in three track or field events, so that means we get to choose from all seven, all seven of these. Okay. So it's 7, choose 3. Okay? 7, choose 3. So we have 7 factorial up top. Then we're going to have 3 factorial times 4 factorial. Notice how that the two numbers on the bottom add up to what we have on in the numerator. So the denominator here, 3 and 4, they add up to 7. And that's the way it should be. Okay? And then let's just write these out. 7 times 6 times 5 times 3 times... Oh! Skipped 4. Times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And then on the bottom there we have 3 times 2 times 1 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Now I know that's a lot of work okay, writing all those out, but you can hopefully see that it really works out when we stack them up like that because the 2's cancel, the 1's cancel, the 3's cancel, the 4's cancel. Okay, And then I hope, to, hope that you guys can see that, well, 2 times 3 right there, that would be 6. So actually this 6 and that 2 and the 3 actually cancel as well. So what we have on top is 7 times 5, and we're just left with 1 on the bottom. So 7 times 5 is 35, 1, and obviously that's going to simplify down to 35. So if you had 7 events to choose from, and it doesn't matter the order that you choose them, Okay, doing the discus first and then running the 200, or running the 200 and then throwing the discus, it doesn't matter. You, the, the thing that matters is that you're in both events. And there are 30 different ways, 30 different combinations of doing that. So 7 choose 3 
is 35. Okay. Hopefully that uh, that example cleared a couple of things up. We've got a little bit more challenging, a little bit higher number with the seven. Um, let's um, go. Let's go on to another example here that um, might be uh, a little bit more um, closer to home. So let's say we are going to Papa Murphy's Take and Bake Pizza, and we are creating um, a pizza that we want. Okay. And uh, now let's say that we. Um, have uh, to choose the meats, okay? And so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven meats to choose from. So we have seven to choose from, and let's say that we want um, two of them. Seven, choose two, okay? And so seven, choose two, we're going to have seven factorial up top. Then the number of favorable outcomes is, well, we want two we don't want five okay and so once again seven six five four three two one and then we have two times one and then we have five four three two one and I hope you guys can see how these cancel out like that Okay, and then 6 divided by 2 is 3, so I'm going to put the 3 up top and cross out the 2 down there because we cancel it out. 7 times 3 is 21. There are 21 different ways of taking these 7 meats and choosing 2 of them. 7 choose 2 would be 21. Okay, so there's many different ways. This is why um, pizza pizza companies and... Um, uh, and multiple um, food companies have so many different options because you can arrange them in so many different ways that um, it gives it gives their customers a lot of options. Okay, and so you could go th through the same thing. Uh, obviously, you have veggies too that you could be putting on there, like black olives, my favorite. But um, you go through and and you can choose any of those ones. And the more you have to choose from, the um, the more options their customers have. Okay. So hopefully these examples were um, were very uh, understandable. Okay, and uh, let's move on to our um, calculator here. Okay, so if you wanted to do seven, choose two in your calculator. Seven, choose two. Okay, what you would need to do is you would need to um, hit the seven key, um, and then you would hit the probability key. And then you would, so this is first, this is second. The third thing is I believe you have to go over, um, the third thing you'd have to do is you have to go to the right once. You'd only have to go to the right once. And I believe it has something um, like with a big C, an N, and an R, I believe is the way they do it. Okay. And so seven was already put in. You click on this icon under the probability key. And then you're going to need to hit two again, or not again, but hit 2 to get the 7 choose 2 option. And then the fifth thing you'll need to do is you'll need to hit the equals key and hopefully you get 21 just like we did here. Okay, So 7 choose 2, hopefully you get 21 and that is the faster way of doing it on your calculator. Okay, Hopefully these were all helpful hints and um, that uh, if you have any questions, I'll hopefully be able to clear them up the next time I see you in class. And uh, today's assignment is, um, uh, it doesn't have to be the practice. I believe there is a reteaching worksheet and um, a enrichment worksheet as well. So choose whichever 12-6 worksheet that you would like to do. Um, complete that for our next class, and um, I will see you then.